only a message for the Muslim world, but for the world, saying that extremism has to be rooted out. We have to work together in order to move forward in this world. Uh, you're going to always ex encounter extremists. Mm -hmm. hold, hold on, Mr. Mahdi. Let me just get the Reverend yeah, in here. I, would but like the Re I have a question for you also. I mean, how much of your congregation, Reverend, would be would be buying the conversation that we're having here. I mean, is there, do you feel that there's... I don't understand what you mean. Well, I mean, is, do you feel that there is still a somewhat of a, of a backlash? I mean, it, you know, especially among the Christian community, um, that they don't necessarily believe that there are extremist factions. They believe it's much more widespread through the Islamic community. No, no, I think most people recognize that we're probably talking about a relatively small fraction. Um, but as Jim pointed out, even a small fraction is a sizable uh, possibility problem. Uh, I'd like to get, uh, to get back to uh, the president's speech and his efforts. And, and uh, obviously, again, as I was trying to say before, he's, he's, he sees a vision of, of building a bridge between the Western world and, and the Islamic world. And, and he may be successful at that, uh, even moderately successful, probably would be a good thing in a sense. However, it, it, in his speech also and in the policy that he's implemented, the odd man out in this effort is the nation of Israel. And so he talks about the present up, up, upheaval in Iran, and he doesn't want to meddle or, or step into the fray there, but he certainly did it in Israel. Uh, in the conflict and, and his policy relative to uh, Israel and the Palestinians. And, and so I, I believe he's, he's making a very determined effort uh, to build that bridge. And I believe, again, the odd man out is Israel. Israel is going to be the, uh, is, is going to be the, again, the odd man out well, in this Ken, thing and receive the short end of the stick Ken, on this I, thing. I was raised in marketing. And one of the first things that one of my mentors taught me was, that you talk to your target audience and you tell well, them sure. what you're trying to do. And that's what he did in that speech. So, hold on. Okay, wait, I gotta take a break, guys. Okay. We are gonna come back. We are gonna talk about Israel. <laughs> and we'll continue to talk about the way that you guys um, market yourselves to the local communities. We'll be right back here on Flashpoint. Have a comment, question, or suggestion? Just email me, Lauren Rowe at ClickOrlando.com. You can also see all of our Flashpoint episodes on ClickOrlando.com. All right, Mr. Mahdi. Okay, I would like to touch on two points. The, it is unfair and it, illogical to name or to label Islam as terrorism because Islam came to demolish the very word terrorism. Because Islam by nature, it means submission and, uh, and uh, peace as well. So I recall a verse in the Quran, chapter, uh, verse 2, chapter 256, it says, All mankind. We created you from a single male and female and made you into nations and tribes so that you may to know one another. The best among you is the best in conduct. Also, another verse similar in the Jewish Torah, it says, whoever save a life as if he save all humanity, whoever kills life as if he sa uh, kills all humanity. More, uh, more, more interestingly, even in a state of war, Islamically speaking, the rule of engagement is this, per the Quran, even in a state of war, if state A and state B are fighting, as a Muslim, you have no right to kill civilians, non-combatant children, or even the livestock, or, or trees, or, or so forth, so forth. And there is a strict rules, and there is no such thing as, a, as aggressive war, only to defend yourself. And that's even in, in nature or in any other rule or in the Bible, you have the right to defend yourself. That's one point. The second point, I would like to mention the Muslim reactions about the, the groundbreaking of, of that. I think Mr. Obama paved the way for a real change. He was speaking of a change, really. This is definitely a step and stone real in dialogue. the change. Real dialogue paving the way. And the Muslims, some of them are very skeptical. Some of them, this is a sweet, honey talk. But we need action. Actions speak louder than, than words. The Grand Mufti of Egypt says that Obama's speech signaled a, a, a processing beginning for a new era in the relationship between the United States and the Arab and the Muslim world, okay, paving on. the way for real dialogue between civilizations. Mr. Shipley, that was part of the part of the what he ran on. He said, you know, I will open up dialogue with these people yeah. that we've refused to talk to. Right. Um, but do you I, think he made some mistakes in his speech as well? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, the angle of the speech, as I say, I understand where he was headed with it, but as an example, he equated the Holocaust 
with A, the founding of the state of Israel, which anybody who knows history knows that's ridiculous. It's the historic home of the Jewish people. There was a King David, and he was a little bit before the Holocaust. Um, that has always been the historic home of the Jewish people, and there were Jews always in Israel, the first Jewish commonwealth, the second Jewish commonwealth, and this is the third Jewish commonwealth. The second thing is to equate the Holocaust with anything else that ever happened in this world is a terrible mistake because it degrades that one thing that most people still can't grasp, worse than the Crusades, worse than anything that has ever happened. And the Crusades But killed. it does give you an example of, of just one statement that can kind of negate other parts of what he might have said right. Which, which is a problem in any speech. But again, you got to, I think we all have to remember that speeches and the things we read, that's theater. Yes. What really counts is what goes on yeah, day to day behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and that's actually, and I'll, I'll give you uh, the domestic uh, view, or being an American, an American Muslim, he, he did reach out to American Muslims in that speech, as well as the rest of the Muslim world. An American Muslim, though, is skeptical because of, you know, especially the past eight years, the policies and, and a lot of the, um, the Patriot Act and, and other things mixed in there, atmosphere of fear, made it hard for American Muslims to necessarily uh, get their uh, proper share of the justice system or even be treated fairly from communities around them. There was backlash against American Muslim communities. We saw mosques. Uh, so this you know. wasn't just about relations with outside right. of the United States. It was about relations here at home as well. That's right. True. But but Jim hit it right on the point. He said it's all theater. It's good words from the president, positive tone. But there has to be policies put in place to implement what he's saying. I have to. I'm sorry. The reverend has to be the last but, word. Yeah. We're out of time. Go ahead. Well, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, and uh, Mr. Obama and his administration, Ms. Clinton, they're in. They're putting those policies very much in place. And and again, uh, the the object of it ends up being Israel. Mm -hmm. And and so they're very much. They they've taken a very very strong. Uh, change in, in position of the United States relative to Israel. We happen to feel that Israel is is one of the most ardent allies well, of the United and States. And of course, that's a different show. I'm out of time. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we did definitely scratch the surface. So thank you all, gentlemen, for being here. And uh, we'll be back here next week on Flashpoint. Have a great week. Tell your friends.